Thank you all for being here with us today. Today, I have the immense pleasure of sitting down with Etrelita Karsh, who is Yusuf Karsh's wife. Hilliard, my dear colleague, who is the curator of the exhibition, who's done an absolutely wonderful job, as you will see, will talk to us about the images themselves in just a minute and will give us a tour of the exhibition. But before that happens, I feel so lucky today to have a moment to talk with you, uh, Estrelita, about your life with Yusuf, about your own work, and about um, and, and about your lives together. So thank you so much for your time. Great pleasure. So I think I'll start by asking the very basic question. How did you and Yusuf Karsh meet? We met in the strangest of ways. He had come to Chicago to photograph my boss. And it never happened. My boss was Dr. Walter C. Alvarez, formerly head of medicine at the Mayo Clinic, and I was his editor. And the two lovely people who owned medical magazines had decided that the loveliest gift they could give to dear Dr. Alvarez would be a portrait by Karsh. And so he was, he was asked, his assistant arrived with 200 pounds of equipment. You know, this was not selfie days. This was 200 pounds of real equipment that had to be done in his own studio. And um, everything was running beautifully until Yusuf arrived. And then he got a terrible, terrible news that his dear wife was dying and he must okay. rush home. She had had, she had had breast cancer and this was a very difficult period. He left immediately, everything was canceled. He was in great grief, of course. And he went to Europe and went to Morocco and did, did films with Cornell Wilde, who was an actor in that, mm -hmm. in that late, late 50s period. And I did not see him for almost a year and a half. Interesting. Never met him, never met him. I continued my work with Dr. Alvarez as his editor, helping him with his syndicated medical column and doing things in medical history in which I'd become interested. And then finally the day arrived and I did not see him because I had the flu, was recovering from it. He photographed Dr. Alvarez and then came a phone call at about 5.30 in his usual child-like, wonderful, very persuasive manner. Come on, childy, come on, come on down and meet, and meet Karsh. And this was at the, in Chicago at, uh, at one of the hotels across the street from, from each other, done in 18th century uh, uh, way. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, no, I really, you know, I mean, I was very impressed by Mr. Karsh, but I mean, I really didn't feel like going out. And he persuaded you were sick. me. Well, I, I wasn't, I was at the end of it. And he at knew- At the it. end, okay, recovery. He, he, never, he never would have asked me to do it. And uh, come on, childy, come on, childy. Well, very well. Reluctantly, I got dressed and went to the Ambassador East across the street from the Ambassador West, two mm -hmm. hotels facing each other. And uh, I met him and we spoke and it was a very formal meeting and no bells rang, unfortunately. And uh, however, I did notice what I call the yearning in his eyes and that sort of interested me. Well, goodbyes were said. And I thought, well, what a nice thing to meet, to meet such a lovely person. Mm -hmm. And as I say, in terms of being impressed, well, you know, Nobelists ran in and out of our office. So, I mean, yes, he was famous, but so what? I mean, he was tough lady to impress. <laughs> he made no effort to impress. He was the same from the day yeah. I met him until, until many, many years later. He was just himself all the time, which was a, a very interesting. It's a wonderful quality. It's something that not yes. everyone has. Sometimes he being oneself it. is easier said than done. No, he was the same with everyone, whether it was a waiter or a priest or a queen or a king or, or someone in the theater or an author or just a nice human being who wanted to be photographed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
So I, I was very happy to have met him. The photographs were tender and beautiful yes. as Dr. Alvarez. And then came a call from Ottawa from the comfort work. And it was his, his secretary who was a British war bride. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Otto was very English anyway, as you know, yes. and came the call. Mr. Kosh is wondering, she said, whether you would be interested in uh, seeing the symphony with him uh, on Thursday in Chicago. And I thought about it and I had tickets every, every week, which was a great, great thing for me because I had worked my way through college and I had always longed to get tickets to the symphony. And mm -hmm. finally, I was in a position to buy tickets and take a taxi, a taxi to the <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so I said, quite truthfully, thank you. But I saw it. I saw it Tuesday night. Good for you. Hard to get. <laughs> well, that, well, that, well, that, well, that, no, no. That's what all my girlfriends thought. They said, Estralita, are you crazy? <laughs> I, said, I said, no, I saw it. I really, I really never believed in that kind of thing. And, uh, and I thought, you know, if that's the way to get a man and he's stupid, I don't want it, you know, but, it, but Good point. at any rate, I, I was honest. And I said, no, three weeks later came another call from Ottawa and the British war bride. Mr. Kosh is wondering whether uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there is some theater that you have not seen. And, <laughs> And, 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 and if he thought that, you know, he was, and, and, and I quite truthfully said, yes, there is. And I don't even remember what we saw that night, but I do know that a year and a half later, we were married. A beautiful story. It I'd like a, to- It was an inevitability for some strange reason. I well, mean, it seems as though while you might have been slower to catch on, he certainly had a certain something for you uh, after your first real meeting where you got to where you got to speak with one another. Yes. The nice thing is that, that we were both ourselves. I, yes. was, I was less because I didn't feel that well. And I was very interested in him. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I thought he was a thoughtful and kind man. That was my... Mm -hmm my initial impression, which mm -hmm. never changed throughout throughout our 42 year marriage. I wanted to return a little bit to the medical context because it's perhaps not something everyone knows, but uh, you, Estrelita, are a very accomplished uh, historian, medical historian and writer as well. And I know that um, Yusuf had also an interest in medical sciences, in he doctors wanted he, he wanted, wanted to be a doctor probably because of the massacres in which he had been involved as a young person in uh in armenia in, in Armenia, well so, turkey and Armenia. yes then turkey yes and, ottoman empire and then, of yes. course in aleppo where the family sought refuge right so he all in, in fact many it turned out that many of our friends were doctors besides uh, uh others and the theater we both loved the theater and it was in the theater that Yusuf really learned about lighting. Because that's of, right. That's right. And you and can that was, and that was in Ottawa. And you can uh, see in the images in the exhibition the incredible techni technical mastery that he had of of light. And I was very interested to learn from you and other sources just how much uh, the theatrical lighting helped him hone his craft. Well, you see, when he when he came to Canada, as I said, as we, mm -hmm. as everyone knows by now, probably at the age of 15, alone, mm -hmm. <clears throat> after 29 days in steerage, and uh, the, he, he emerged from, from the boat at the port of Halifax mm -hmm. alone to mm -hmm. be greeted by his uncle. His uncle was the only member of his family who had made it across the pond. Mm -hmm. she was, he was a, a son of, uh, of, well, he was a brother to his mother. He was his mm -hmm. uncle and he was a photographer and mm -hmm. he was practicing in, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. and he met Yusuf. Imagine the kid had never seen snow. He was Amazing. 15 years old. 
he remembered, he told me, the bells tinkling because it was New Year's. Mm -hmm. And he said the loveliest chimes he had ever heard. But of course, when they tried to put him in school, where do you put a young man who was fluent in French, unknown to the language in English, and mm -hmm. he arrived only armed with good manners, which <laughs> so armed with good manners, they put him in school. And where did they put him? They put him in the third or fourth grade, a big adolescent boy. Really? In with okay. the babies, with the young, young kids. Wow. And he was mortified beyond the sure. And two little girls, the Bradley sisters. Mm -hmm. the daughters of the of the mayor of Sherbrooke, I believe. They must have taken pity on him. It must have been a pathetic sight. Mm. <laughs> and so, they, so they played marbles with him. They made sure, and they made sure that he won. Amazing. And that is so it, sweet. It is such a, <laughs> That's a great story. Sweet. And he, <laughs> he said that was the day my love affair with Canada began. It was so charming. That's so a beautiful uh, story. You can see that relationship of trust that he cultivated because you see that people let their guard down in the photographs. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, because there are a few photographs of you, beautiful photographs, I should say, uh, in the exhibition. Long, like, long time ago. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd like to ask you what it was like for you to sit for your husband. I never sat. Oh, in the... Husband. You, what, so ex explain. Okay. Well, well, well the, the, fir the first one, the one you're using for your show, um, was As taken. As a title wall, beautiful. Um, I can't tell you how that made me feel. I mean, you know, I was the girl. I was the bookworm. I was the girl <laughs> that, you know, that, that just uh, just wanted to go to school and learn. And and just to be, it, it amazed me. It really, it really did. And um, uh, it, well, we wanted to make that tribute to you and to this beautiful gift that you and the estate have given us with this incredible donation. Um, and it's interesting to hear you describe yourself as a bookworm. And I know, as I mentioned, you're such an accomplished uh, scholar and writer yourself. Uh, but you in so these loved. He loved it. He was very, very encouraging uh, about that. And about it, your work. Yes, yes. And shared it with me. And uh, uh, even uh, the Britannica stuff that I did, the Encyclopedia Britannica on uh, uh, this was a, the Britannica had a, uh, you know, then you bought books, you bought the whole set of the mm -hmm. Britannica. And that was your go-to book when you right. want to learn about the world. And every year they had a medical annual, beautifully, beautifully done, just like the regular uh, series. And the first part was medical history for the um, enlightened, intelligent layman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the second part were updates on, okay. on, on medicine from famous doctors who were head of their specialties. And uh, so he did that and I lectured occasionally. Um, about. It's wonderful that he supported in that you in in that way, and that you had your own independent life. And and although you describe yourself as a bookworm, I would just say to those of you who are going to see this wonderful exhibition as soon as it opens, um, we also chose that image of you as a title wall because it shows your strength and independence, not to mention incredible beauty. I say not just to be flattering, but but it's very true. And it's and he he captures your uh, strength and and kindness in the images that he that he took of you. So although you might not have been physically sitting, I'm curious to know. Oh, they were they were momentary sittings. The, the momentary first sittings. One, the first him. one, I don't even remember when he really did. fascinating. That was the first one. Uh, the one with where I'm looking down in a, in a, in a caftan. Yes, yes. Um, that was my 50th birthday fo photograph. You're kidding. Wow. I, I was 50 then. A long time you ago. You were 20 then. I can't believe you were 50 then. That's amazing. Well, okay. Now I'm 90. I'm 91. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, it, was, it was quite, quite, quite astonishing. 
there I was all dressed up in my caftan to go mm-hmm. to a, a birthday dinner. And he said, just a minute. And I said, yes. And I guess I must have looked down. And that was it. That it's, was the photograph. It's an amazing I said, image. Did I sit for him? No. But of course, I mean, I sat for him my whole life. Basically, right. he knew me pretty well. He knew uh, already. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, I'll ask you, just in closing, is there a, because you, you witnessed your husband photograph so much, um, you, of course, know all the body, the entire body of work so well, is, do you have a favorite image in the I entire favorites. corpus? Not, Sorry? Not favorites with it, with it. Favorites. So you have a few favorites. Would you share with us a few of your favorite images in the corpus? Well, one is uh, George Bernard Shaw, because it reminds me of of a print, of of Mm -hmm. a steel print. Mm -hmm. And it captures so rich and and the the whole encounter with Shaw um, uh, was was fraught with with dynamism back and forth. And uh, you could see that. It's a very droll photograph. And it's, it's, I, I, I love that picture, uh, re- remem- remembering, rem- yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you say that it was fraught with dynamism, that is because they had a, a kind because of- The way Shaw greeted him and, uh, and his, he called her his appallingly efficient secretary who, 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 met, who, who met him. And uh, yes, I, Shaw, yes. Shaw Just, is definitely high ranking up there. Very high, yes. I've always loved, maybe because it reminded me of, of, of his work and, and mm-hmm. the, in the 20th century and, and whatever. I mean, yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much, Estrelita, for sharing that, for sharing your stories. You have so many wonderful stories. I could talk to you all afternoon, but I know we have a limited time, unfortunately. I want to say a huge thank you again uh, to you for this wonderful gift uh, of 111 images, which will have a major impact on the collection of the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. And also just thank you for your time, uh, your intelligence, your generosity, um, and all of your support of this exhibition. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to you. And I'm happy to share it with with Montreal, which so it's a homecoming for you. So, and it means a great deal to me. So thank you.